um, I would like to offer my condolences to the Serena family, um, in specific to Christine, DeMichael, and uh, Samantha, of the passing of your mother. Though it may not feel like it, your prayers were answered. Um, it might not feel like it, but your prayers was answered. And I want to show you this. And the only way I could do it is to show you from scripture. So I want to, again, start off by um, offering my condolences and my prayer to you for comfort. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. I know that right now your heart is breaking I know that right now it's hard to comprehend, it's hard to, hard to understand what has transpired, what has taken place. I know that right now it might feel as if something permanent has happened. And so because of that, I want to share this with you. When asking for prayer warriors to pray. The only thing that a prayer warrior can speak is the word of God. And the only thing that they can pray is that God's will be done. So I want to show you something. I want to show you God's will. I want to show you this. This is James chapter 5. I spoke of This that you're going through now, this is not the end of the, it's not the end of the matter. Death is not the end of the matter. Your mom is resting. Your mom is resting. Um, she's sleeping. But let me show you this first. Um, it is James chapter 5, verse 14. It says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of of the Lord is verse number 15 it says and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins it will be forgiven him so here's the thing many times when we look at that verse the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. What we expect in our mind is we expect that the person will instantly get better. We expect that they will get back up. Well, see, here's the thing that I need to show you. Your mom is instantly better. Your mom is up. She did get up. The Lord did raise her up. He did. We expect it to happen here on earth. We expect, but, but listen, if your mom would have got her natural healing and got up off of her sick bed and, and still be walking today, she would still have to deal with the grievances that we all have to deal with today. She would still have to deal with COVID, Delta, Omicron, and, and, and everything else. She would still have to deal with the sicknesses, whatever illness or sickness was in her body. She would still have to deal with the effects of aging. Your mom doesn't have to deal with that anymore. That is done. She is resting from that. She's allowed to rest. She don't have to deal with, with any of the troubles that we go through. We still have to suffer with in this world, which is why my heart is towards your entire family, towards all of you. And my prayers is towards you for comfort and why I know I needed to come here with this. The Lord raised your mom up. I want to share this with you. This is 
2 Corinthians again. This time it's chapter 5. And this is what it says. This is verse 1, starting at verse 1. It says, For we know that if our earthly house, our bodies, if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house made not with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared for us this very thing is God who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather, to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. So. I want to comfort you in that. It feels like you might have lost something here, but that scripture, that, that was 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I read from verses 1 to verse number 8. And basically what that was sharing with us is to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Again, it, it might seem like something that is permanent and something and you it, it might feel to you like you would never see your mom again but that's so far from the truth you will see your mom again see this scripture that i read in second corinthians it's our insurance of a resurrection what i want to share with you now is john chapter 11 um there king jesus actually in addressing death referred to it as sleep and I want to share that with you. And I want to give you this picture. And I want to give you this hope. I, I want to help you to understand that this is not the end of it. God promises that you will see your mother again, live and well. What you're not dealing with, what you're not seeing is your mom suffering anymore. You're not seeing her suffering anymore. You're not seeing her having to be stressed out about the, the everyday anxieties of life. Bills, food. Again, health issues. You're not seeing none of that. She is, she's resting. She's allowed to rest from that. Here in John chapter 11, Jesus was dealing with the um, issue of uh, a friend of his. He had become aware of a friend of his was sick. His name was Lazarus. Um, word was sent to him that Lazarus was sick and, and the sisters who sent this word to him they expected Jesus to simply say the word and he would get better because they knew he could they knew that Jesus was able they knew that nothing was impossible for Jesus they knew that he didn't even have to be present so they knew that Jesus from wherever he stood all he had to do was speak the word and Lazarus could be, be healed but this is what Jesus said it says, well, this is John chapter 11. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, a town, the town of Mar Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, this is what Jesus said. He said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sisters and, and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after that, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. See, here's the thing. Jesus didn't immediately get up. He did not immediately get up to go and see about Lazarus when he heard that he was sick. He on purpose delayed. He on purpose waited. 
So it says, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. If one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke, to, spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. They spoke of his death. Jesus called death being sleep. Now, here's the thing that I want to share with you. We all, all of us, die every day. We don't realize it. We don't know. We, this, this is like way beyond our comprehension. Every last one of us die every day. Every day. Every last one of us. But here's the thing. We are awakened every day also. Sometimes we set our alarm clocks on our watches, on our radios, or however, you know, we set alarm clocks to wake us up. But what we fail to realize is that it's not the alarm clock that wakes us up. Some people have alarm clocks by their bed and they still do not get up. It's not the alarm clock that wakes us up. It's King Jesus. He calls our name. And we don't recognize it. We don't understand. And when he wakes us up, it's for a purpose. For his purpose. His will be done. But here's the other thing. When we're allowed to sleep, his will is still being done. So this is... Um, this is John chapter 11 again. I'm, I'm going to continue. It says, uh, then Jesus said, to his, then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death. But they thought that he was speaking about him taking rest and sleep. So then Jesus says to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you might believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. So now um, he's about a couple of miles away from the city where Lazarus is at and Martha hears about it and so she goes out to him. Mary, she's upset. Mary is angry. Mary's angry at God because of the fact that she knew that all you had to do was speak the word. All you had to do was say for him to be healed and he would have been healed like that. Not only did you not speak the word, you didn't even show up at the burial. Like, like, so Mary was very upset, but Martha, she got up and she went to Jesus. So here's the conversation between Jesus and Martha. It says, Jesus said to her, uh, well, as a matter of fact, we'll start with Martha. Uh, verse 20, John chapter 11, verse 20. It says, now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See, that is a hope that we have. We have a, a hope, a belief in a resurrection for everyone because God's word promises it. But look at what Jesus said to her. It's verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. Your mom believed in King Jesus. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming to the world. Now we know that she loved, she went to go get her sister Mary, who was very angry with Jesus. And Mary came back and Mary said the same thing. Had you been here, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And so that is the area where 
there's anger. Um, I did a book that addressed that. The book is called Comfort and Encouragement. And that book addresses the anger that sometimes we feel when we pray, when we pray. And we feel like our prayer has not been answered. And so because of that, we might have prayed so many times for so many things. And we feel like our prayer wasn't answered. So we'll call on other people to pray. We'll call on prayer warriors to pray. And here's the deal with that. We can only pray for God's will to be done. So we need to understand what God's will is. We need to understand that it is not his desire for anyone to die, but for anyone to lose their life, but for us to attain to repentance. The King Jesus said, he who, this is um, verse 25 again. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live again. That's what he said. He said, he is the resurrection and the life. And if you believe in him, even if you die, you will live again. That's his promise to us. Again, um, I'm going to share with you. Your mom actually did believe in Jesus Christ. She actually did. And so she has that promise. And because she believed in Jesus Christ, that promise for her means she's simply sleeping. She's resting. She no longer have to fight with the, the sicknesses and illnesses in her body. She no longer have to be troubled by the things that's going on in this world that is troubling everyone else. She don't have to worry about anybody getting sick and coming around her with this this plague that's going through she don't have to worry about any of that she don't have to deal with the aches and pains that she might have suffered in her body that nobody might have been aware of she don't have to deal with any stresses any anxiety she don't have to deal with none of that she gets to rest the rest of us on this earth have to continue to deal with the things that's on this earth and and while we are um, allowed to wake up every day on this earth we have an opportunity to continue to and we have to continue to um, demonstrate our trust in King Jesus. But for your mom, she's allowed to rest until that final call where she hears her voice called. And so um, with that being said, I want to share with you 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It's verses 13 through 18. And this is the comfort that we who believe in the resurrection have. It says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. First of all, it's letting us know that those who don't have a hope in the resurrection, those who don't know God's promises of a resurrection, they sorrow and they grieve as if, okay, death is the end of it, but death is not. It's not the end of the story. Um, so it says, I, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. So right now, um, I want to encourage you, if you do not have a relationship, your own, your own personal relationship, your personal relationship with King Jesus don't have to look like everybody else's. You don't have to have a whole lot of faith. Jesus said faith. These are mustard seeds. 
I'm going to show you from the bottle. I think it'll be easier. Do you see how little they are? He didn't say you had to have a whole bunch of mustard seeds. He said you had to have faith the size of a mustard seed. One individual. Just one. Just one. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. All you got to do is believe in King Jesus. That's it. Believe in his promises. And that's the purpose of our reading God's word so that we can hear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not about religion. It's not about denomination. It's about believing in King Jesus and believing the promise. And he even has a promise for your mom. So as your mom rests, as she sleeps, you're not saying goodbye to her. You're saying, I'll see you later. And then on our end, because she's already resting and she went to sleep believing in King Jesus. So on our end, our fight, your fight, each of you, all of you, your fight is to believe in King Jesus also. For real, for real. Believe in him. Trust in him. Trust his promise. Believe that, that your mom will wake up and you will see her again. You have no hope. I pray in the name of Jesus that your hope is strengthened. That even though your mom sleeps, that you don't give up and you don't write this off as if, okay, now she's gone and you'll never see her again because that's not the case. That's not what God's word said. God cannot fill his word. He promises a resurrection. He does. He promises a resurrection. It says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if you believe that Jesus died and rose again on the third day, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep, which means that we're like for those of us who are waiting on the rapture, we're not going to be caught up before those who are, have already fallen asleep in death. For the, so for those who have fallen asleep, they're going to get up first. And then we're going to be taken up. It says, um, and this is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is verse 15. For we say to you, for this we say to you, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain will, um, until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ will rise first. Verse 17, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So the God of all comfort um, knew that this day was going to come. He, he knew that there was going to come a time. And actually, this day can come for any of us. It can. So for those of us who have a hope, those of us who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died to pay our debt for us, and that even as he died and he was buried in the ground on the third day, he got back up. God raised him back up. So for those of us who believe that God so loved us that he sent his son to pay this debt, this debt of sin for us. Those of us who believe, 
even if we should die, because Jesus said he's the resurrection and the life. So even if we should die waiting for him to return, he says that we will live again. We will live again. That's in John chapter 11. I pray that this encourages you. I pray that your heart is comforted. I pray that you can see everything on the signs, everything that's going on in this world and realize that um, time is short because everything that Jesus foretold um, that our day will be like the last days will be like prior to his return. Everything is happening now. So I pray that you find comfort in knowing that even though your mom sleeps, that you will see her again. You can trust God's word. This is not my word. This is God's word. You can trust God's word. It's not over. It's not said and done. It's not over. Death is not the end of it. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Your mom is not the shell. She's not the body. She's the spirit within. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. One more thing. And then I'm going to end this. God's word says that uh, our Heavenly Father, He's not the Father of the dead, He's the Father of the living. So for Him, your mom is living. Your mom is living. I pray for your comfort. pray that uh, on those evenings, those nights when you find yourself grieving and missing her even more so, I pray that your memories will comfort you. And I pray that along with the memories that you have of the time that you spent with her um, while she was awake and alive on this earth, that you will add to that the promise, the memory of God's promise that you will see her again, alive and well. She's just sleeping. We all go to sleep. And who wakes us up? It's not an alarm clock. We don't wake ourselves up. We hear God's voice. And when we hear him call our name, we wake up. Consider that. Think about it. Think about it. Your alarm does not wake you up. There's some people that had an alarm. That alarm went off and they still didn't get up. You heard God's voice call your name, and that's what's woke you. that is what woke you up. Every single day, we all die. Every single day. And every single day, He wakes us back up. My condolences to you all. <laughs>